ever feel like your mind is just racing a mile a minute? Like it never wants to hit the brakes? Oh, tell me about it. It's like we're constantly bombarded with information and stimulation these days. Right. So today we're hitting the pause button and diving into Zen meditation. There you go. A practice has been helping people find some much needed peace and quiet for centuries. Exactly. And to guide us through this ancient practice, we're turning to this article from spiritualitysource.com. How to practice Zen meditation for a clearer mind and improved well-being. Because who couldn't use a little more clarity and well-being in their life, right? Amen to that. So let's break it down. What exactly are we talking about when we say Zen meditation? Well, the article really zeroes in on the heart of it, which is all about being present, like mm. really, truly present in this moment. And a big part of that is focusing on your breath. Okay, so tuning in, not spacing out. But this is more than just taking a deep breath when you're stressed out, right? Way more. This is Zen meditation, sometimes called Zazen. It comes from Buddhism, and it involves setting aside time to just be, to sit, to breathe, and to notice those thoughts swirling around in your head without letting them carry you away. That sounds, well, challenging, to say the least. Like, how do you actually stop your mind from thinking about a million things at once? It's definitely a practice, something you get better at over time, but the article lays out some great ways to gently redirect your attention back to your breath whenever you notice your mind wandering. It's like training a muscle. The more you work it, the stronger it gets. So how does something as simple as paying attention to your breath create such a significant change? It seems almost too simple, doesn't it? I hear you. But it's not just some new age hype. There's actually a whole lot of scientific research that backs up the benefits of Zen meditation. Okay, now you've got my attention. What kind of benefits are we talking about here? We're talking about reducing stress and anxiety, sleeping better, even improving your ability to focus. There's even research suggesting it can lead to an overall greater sense of well-being. Sign me up for all of that. But let's get practical. How do you actually do it? What does Zen meditation look like in real life? Well, the article spends a good amount of time talking about how to set the stage for a successful meditation. Okay, so what does that involve? Do I need to be sitting under a tree somewhere chanting? Not exactly. It's more about finding a quiet space mm -hmm. where you can relax without being interrupted. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe dim the lights, get comfortable, that sort of thing. And it's generally a good idea to avoid meditating right after a big meal. You don't want your stomach stealing the show. So ditch the busy cafe for some peace and quiet. Yeah, it's really about finding that stillness. And the article focuses a lot on the traditional form of Zen meditation, which they call Zazen. It's all about posture and stillness. Okay, walk me through it. What am I actually doing? Imagine this. You're sitting on the floor, legs crossed, spine nice and straight, but not tense or anything. You've got your hands resting gently in your lap. Your eyes can be open or closed, but if they're open, you're softly focusing on a spot on the floor in front of you. And you're breathing. Just nice, deep, slow breaths. That does sound kind of relaxing, actually, but... I have to admit, the thought of sitting still for an extended period of time makes me a little antsy. You and me both. Mm -hmm. That's why I found it really interesting that the article talks about another form of Zen meditation called Kinhin. Kinhin is all about walking meditation. Walking meditation. Now, that's something I could get into. Tell me more. It's kind of cool, actually. It involves walking really, really slowly. And as you walk, you're paying attention to every sensation, the way your feet feel hitting the ground, the movement of your body, even just the rhythm of your breath. So it's like you're taking that same mindful awareness we talked about and applying it to something as simple as walking. Exactly. It's about finding that stillness even when you're moving. And the article really emphasizes the breath. Whether you're sitting in zazen or doing walking meditation, the breath is that constant focal point. I can see that. Sort of like an anchor that brings you back to the present moment. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. And it's not about emptying your mind completely. The article stresses that thoughts are going to pop up. It's totally natural. It's more about what you do when those thoughts come knocking. What do you mean? It's about acknowledging those thoughts without getting totally swept up in them. Not judging yourself for having them. Just observing and then gently guiding your attention back to the breath. Easier said than done, I'm sure. But it sounds like it takes practice. So how do you actually make this a regular part of your life? You can't exactly walk around meditating all day long, can you? Although that would be nice sometimes, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. But you're right. Most of us have places to be, things to do. That's why the article suggests finding ways to incorporate mindful breathing into your day, even if it's just for a few minutes at a time. Like mini meditation breaks whenever you feel those stress levels rising. Exactly. Waiting for the elevator. Perfect time to focus on your breath. Stuck in traffic. 
Hmm. Turn off the radio, roll down the windows, and just breathe. I love that. But what about making it more of a consistent thing? You know, not just a once in a blue moon kind of thing, but something you actually stick with. Yeah, I think that's where building a routine comes in. And the article really hammers this home consistency is key. So finding a specific time each day, making it a non-negotiable part of your schedule. That's the idea. Even if it starts small, like five minutes in the morning or 10 minutes before bed. The point is you show up consistently. It's like brushing your teeth for your mind, you know. I love that analogy, mental hygiene. But let's be honest, life happens. Some days you're juggling a million things and finding even five minutes for yourself feels impossible. Oh, absolutely. The article talks about that too. They suggest starting small. Don't put too much pressure on yourself to have these hour-long meditation sessions right out of the gate. Even just a few minutes here and there can make a difference. So baby steps. I like it. But what about the motivation factor? Like some days you're just not feeling it. How do you stay motivated to stick with it? That's a good question. Maybe try keeping a journal. The article mentions that it can be helpful to track your progress and celebrate those small wins. I'm all about celebrating the small wins. Right. Even just acknowledging that you showed up for yourself even for a few minutes, that's huge. This is great stuff. We've gone from feeling totally overwhelmed to feeling like we can actually do this. But what about those inevitable challenges, you know? Like, what about when your mind just won't stop racing or you can't sit still for more than five seconds? Oh, the struggles are real. But I think the article does a great job of addressing those common obstacles, don't you? Totally. So let's talk about it. First up, what about those of us who are convinced we have zero time for meditation? It's easy to fall into that trap, for sure. But remember those mindful breathing exercises we talked about earlier. Right. Sneaking in a few breaths while the coffee brews. Exactly. The article is all about finding those small pockets of peace throughout your day. It doesn't have to be this big formal thing. It's about working with what you've got. Now, what about the racing thoughts thing? That's always been a big one for me. It's almost like your mind knows you're trying to quiet down. Yep. So it decides to have a party, right? Exactly. It's like, oh, you're trying to find some inner peace. Not on my watch. Yeah. I love that. But remember, it's totally normal for those thoughts to come up. The article actually suggests picturing your thoughts like clouds passing by. They're there, you see them, but you don't have to grab onto them and let them carry you away. I like that. It takes the pressure off. It's about acknowledging them and then letting them go. And if you find your mind wandering, just gently guide it back to your breath. Practice, 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 right? It's a journey, not a race. Speaking of journeys... Any tips for those of us who have a hard time sitting still? The article emphasizes comfort above all else. Don't be afraid to experiment with different postures, cushions, blankets, whatever you need. Or try sitting on a chair if that's more comfortable. And sometimes a little bit of movement can actually be helpful. They even talk about incorporating some gentle stretching or yoga into your routine to release any tension you might be holding in your body. Makes sense. It's all about finding what works for you. Exactly. Because if you're uncomfortable, you're going to be way more likely to give up. And that brings us to our last obstacle, lack of motivation. It's easy to say I'm going to meditate every day, but it's harder to actually do it. It's the age old problem, right? So what's the solution? The article suggests a few things, like finding an accountability buddy. Having someone to check in with can make a world of difference. Knowing that someone's expecting you to show up can be a powerful motivator. I've used that trick myself. Me too. And don't forget about the power of those guided meditations. Oh, those are great, especially when you're first starting out. There are so many apps and online resources these days. It makes meditation so much more accessible. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground here. We have, from the basics of Zen meditation to those inevitable challenges that pop up along the way. And I have to say, I'm feeling much more equipped to handle those challenges now. Mm -hmm. And you know what's so interesting? The article really emphasizes those small, consistent actions. It's not always about making some big, grand gesture. Sometimes it's just about taking those few minutes to breathe. It's so true. Those small steps, they add up over time. It's like building a house, right? Hmm. You start with one brick at a time, and eventually you've got yourself a solid foundation. And speaking of building blocks, I liked how the article talks about those common roadblocks that people hit when they're trying to build a meditation practice. Like, what about those times when you sit down to meditate and it feels like your mind just won't quit? Happens to the best of us. It's important to remember that meditation isn't about emptying your mind completely. It's more about learning to observe those thoughts without getting totally caught up in them. Right, because that's when you get swept away in the current, right? Exactly. The article has this great visual. They talk about picturing your thoughts as 
clouds just drifting by. Right. The clouds are always there, but you don't have to latch on to them and let them take you for a ride. You can just observe them and let them float on by. Ooh, I like that. So it's more about acknowledging those thoughts, not freaking out about them. But what about those times when it's not just your mind that's restless, but your body too? Any advice for those of us who can't sit still to save our lives? You know, the article really stresses the importance of comfort. So if you need to fidget a little, fidget a little. Don't be afraid to experiment with different postures or use props like cushions or a blanket to make yourself more comfortable. They even talk about trying a meditation bench if that feels better for you. So it's all about finding what works. Right, exactly. Forcing yourself into some pretzel position when you're just starting out is a recipe for disaster. It's like anything else. If you're not comfortable, you're not going to stick with it. Speaking of sticking with it, what about those days when the motivation just isn't there? Ah, the motivation struggle is real. Maybe try finding yourself an accountability partner, someone you can check in with who will help keep you on track. It's amazing how much of a difference it makes just knowing that someone's expecting you to show up, right? U-G-E. And you know what else I find helpful? Those guided meditations. Oh, those are great especially for beginners. And there are so many great apps and online resources out there these days. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground in this deep dive. We've explored the ins and outs of Zen meditation. We've talked about the benefits, the challenges, and how to overcome those inevitable obstacles that pop up. It's all about the journey, right? And like any journey, there are gonna be bumps along the way. Absolutely. But the important thing is to just keep going. Even if it's just a few minutes a day, those small steps can lead to some pretty big changes. Beautifully said. So for everyone listening, we encourage you to give Zen meditation a try. Explore it. See what it's all about. You might be surprised by the impact it has on your life. And on that note, this has been an enlightening deep dive into Zen meditation. Until next time, keep those minds curious, keep those hearts open, and keep breathing. And keep exploring those practices that help you live a more mindful and fulfilling life.